Welcome to the Seat 77 Sports Desk. As always, North America, I am Dave DeBaugh. Today, I am coming from you from the new super plush <laughs> Seat 77 broadcast studio in the Silicon Valley. Lots to uh, cover on our inaugural uh, podcast and video show here at uh, Seat 77. We're going to cover Roger Goodell. Because <laughs> how can you not talk about the National Football League and not co- talk about the commissioner? Who cares about the players anymore? This is Goodell's league. Um, we're also going to cover a couple of the players, Sam Bradford, Nick Foles. And then we're going to actually talk about Spygate. And at some point during the broadcast, we will talk about Serena versus Venus as they got down in the U.S. Open last night in the quarterfinals of the 2015 U.S. Open. So anyways, lots to cover on the big broadcast uh, today. Um, I thought we would, you know, kind of kick this show off uh, um, a little bit differently than we we normally would and kind of dive straight in to the man that is the commissioner of the National Football League. And in, in fact, I think if Roger could um, do do things a little bit differently, he'd love to have his the image of himself on one of those uh, uh, NBA logos. That is how much Roger Goodell is actually in love with himself. Now, if you haven't heard, Mr. Goodell has decided to not show up at Thursday night's inaugural kickoff game of the 2015-2016 National Football League season. Mr. Goodell is going to stay away from New England. Now, you, you can kind of understand why. It's sure, you know, who wants to go to a place where people are going to throw, you know, their Sammy, their Sammy A at you <laughs> and they're going to throw their their brats and um, all of their other food at you as you walk in and out of the stadium. Still, I find it curious that Mr. Goodell would not have the guts to actually show up. Now, you think about it, it's just it just makes for great reality TV, which is really all I'm about. I have seen all of the Real Housewives of Orange County. I've seen the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I have suffered through the bad seasons of the Real Housewife of New York. And trust me, (laughs) there are a lot of them. I'm still not sure what the Kardashians actually do for a living. I know they've got some small store called Dash that sells some clothing, but I'm still really not sure what they do. I do know this. That when you watch an episode of the Kardashians, and you should watch this, and they're in their cars driving, they don't put their seatbelts on. Now, I don't get it. (laughs) Where is the click and you get a ticket ticket for the Kardashians? I'm telling you, the Kardashians all deserve to be ticketed for not wearing their (laughs) seatbelts. Anyways, so Mr. Goodell has blown it. He's got this great opportunity to actually show that he's a real person, a real man, and show up in Foxborough, congratulate the New England Patriots on last year's Super Bowl, which, by the way, they played with completely inflated footballs that we know of, allegedly, <laughs> and and still won the game. Now, of course, Seattle gave it to them by not simply handing the ball to Marshawn Lynch in the, maybe single-handedly the worst call in the history of the National Football League. And to make it even worse, Seattle has rewarded... <laughs> Their quarterback, who believes in revival water, with a large contract, which is making it difficult for them to uh, sign other players in Seattle. Anyways, so Mr. Goodell, my message to you is don't stay home in your bunker and order a Papa John's pizza. Show up. Be a man. Take your booze like a man. We would all respect you. And plus, more than anything, it would make for fantastic reality tv you're actually hurting the league by not showing up mr goodell ratings would be higher (laughs) if you showed up oh and if you can bring donald trump with you that would be great as well um because you know what goes better than a commissioner on the downside than a reality king like donald trump um who's certainly going to say something that idiotic which would uh enhance your ratings as well i'm telling you this could be like a playoff rating goodell if you showed up for the game. Elsewhere around the National Football League, as we move into the first week of the season, um, Sammy Bradford 
is going to be leading the Nutty Professors, and that's the new Nutty Professor, Chip Kelly's offense, with a slew of players I'm really not sure I know at wide receiver. That being said, Sammy Bradford does look really good. And he looked really good in, in warm-ups. <laughs> Nobody warms up like Sam Bradford. Um, he looked really good in the preseason. And all, all things point to Sam Bradford being entirely healthy. I believe Sam can actually run Chip Kelly's offense effectively. In fact, I think he could actually be great. I think he could probably be a top uh, six or seven quarterback, you fantasy people out there as you get ready for this start of the season. The problem is, and this is the problem with Sam Bradford, and this is the problem with betting on Sam, is that I find it hard to believe that Sam is even going to make it through a single game without getting knocked out. That being said, if Sam can survive more than one game, it would probably make for uh, a good move. But once again, I'm uh, not that I wish any injuries on anybody, because I certainly don't, but Sam Bradford is is like it's he's like my dog walking into um, a china store you just know he's gonna break something <laughs> and you just know for whatever reason Sam Bradford is is like China and there's my dog walking into a china store and he's wagging his tail at like 120 miles an hour like a Serena Williams serve <laughs> and he's gonna break just trust me on this so it was a very interesting trade. I actually thought that Nick Foles did a fantastic job running that offense. I understand that Chip Kelly was was you gushing, uh, rightfully so, by the way, over trying to get Marcus Mariota in the draft. And so they had to clear some space and they had to make some moves to make that happen. That being said, when that didn't happen, they lost Nick Foles. Nick Foles is a, a heck of a quarterback. He understands defense as well. Um, he you know, his progressions are fantastic. Look for Foles to have an excellent season in St. Louis. Now, St. Louis's offensive line, they might as well just just hire a bunch of tight ends and, and stick them in, in their offensive line positions and then just make them eligible, tackle eligible <laughs> often because Nick Foles is going to be running for his life like Arnold Schwarzenegger did in that movie, The Running Man. Trust me, there is no offensive line in St. Louis. The good news is Los Angeles. The born-again Los Angeles Rams are coming back. Uh, it's not official yet, but I, but if I were a betting man, I would bet that Los Angeles will have the Rams back next season. These are probably the last eight games that the Rams will play in St. Louis. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And I'd like to actually just make a quick shift, if you will, to the wonderful world of tennis. Grand Slam tennis. Yes, we must quiet down when we talk about tennis. Now, look, I grew up in Southern California via the snow drifts of Minnesota. Luck for, luckily for me, my, my parents decided it was a good idea to escape the snow drifts when I was 10. To Southern California we go. And I played a little bit of junior tennis. Not a lot. A little. And I, you know, I was okay. I was okay. I played on, I played on uh, uh, the high school team, my my uh, freshman and, and sophomore year, and then and then kind of moved into a different uh, uh, sport called cross country. But that's a whole different story. Running brave, which we can we can get into in a different uh, on a on a different show. That being said, when I was growing up in Southern California, there were these two tennis players um, that everybody was interested in, and one of them was Serena Williams. And every once in a while, on the eleven o'clock news there would be a Serena Williams story. And as she was coming up in the ranks, there was her little sister, uh, or actually her big sister, Venus, who was starting to dominate. And as Venus started to play really well in junior tennis and started to make her way up the ranks, her little sister, Serena, you could just see, was going to be great as well. So we'd see these news stories and then, you know, you, you see all these, you know, prodigies of these these athletes like like Todd Marinovich or Marijuanovich, as we used to call him, because because Todd, his dad would say, you know, Todd has never been to McDonald's in his life. And this is before you could snap a picture at Todd at McDonald's. And trust me, I could have snapped a picture at Todd at McDonald's. In fact, I saw Marinovich at McDonald's so many times that I thought he actually worked there. Meanwhile. <laughs> Todd's dad's on television 
claiming, you know, this is the, the healthiest kid in the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Venus and Serena coming up in Southern California tennis started to dominate. And you could see that they were both going to be great. Now, as we move to 2015, Serena Williams is close to closing the actual Grand Slam where she wins four of the Grand Slams in a calendar year for the Serena Grand Slam Slam. Last night, for what, for a while, was really good tennis, at least in the second set when Venus kind of uh, uh, gave it to her her little sister and, and, and was kind of playing at the form that we saw Venus play probably about seven or eight years ago. Things looked like uh, it was going to be interesting in the third set. And of course, as you all know, at this point, Serena dominated and ended up winning the, the tournament or ended up winning the game or the match. That being said, Serena is unbelievable to watch. I hope, I hope that there's no letdown from beating up on her sister. There was an embrace at the end of the game or the end of the match um, that, you know, was fantastic to watch. Um, it was truly, um, you know, an amazing moment. One of the things that I was going to say that that I think um, the four major sports can learn from tennis. And yeah, when was the last time you heard anybody say <laughs> the four major sports can learn something from tennis? But one of the things I think that they can learn from tennis is the interaction between the players and the fans at the end of a match. And what the U.S. Open does really well, and uh, the other majors do as well, at the end of the at the end of the match, doesn't matter what match it is, the players are interviewed on center court, and they have a chance to talk to the interviewer and talk to the fans. And I think it's 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 very interesting. And if you think about it, imagine at the end of the game, you're you're sitting there, you're interviewing Peyton Manning, (laughs) and Manning has an opportunity to say Papa John's three times in an interview. Um, that the whole stadium can hear. I, I just I think it, it adds a little bit um, to the sport. It humanizes the players. And I think the NFL and the NBA and the NHL uh, and Major League Baseball certainly could learn a lot um, from how, it's just hard to believe, but how tennis handles, um, handles those things at the end of their matches. Um, Finally tonight, I thought I would uh, leave tonight's inaugural show of the Seat 77 Sports Update Desk <laughs> with, with a flashback to Spygate. Now, if you didn't hear, you were probably, probably just hiding from Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all of the things yesterday. But two articles came up, two separate articles, by the way, came out and basically said that the NFL went harder on the Patriots for Deflategate because they didn't go hard enough on them. And it was retribution, (laughs) retribution for Spygate. So suddenly yesterday in, in just classic reality television at the end of practice, if I saw this on the, uh, uh, the NFL network, there were, there were highlights of the players being asked about Spygate and if you think about it, a lot of the players, current players, current players, these are players that were just entering high school when Spike, and in fact, some of them were probably still in middle school. My kids won't let me call it junior high. It's, it's middle school now. I don't know when that happened. Somebody's got to tell me. When did junior high turn into middle school? Send me an email. Info. <laughs> at seat77.com. I want to hear from you. North America. So there are these poor players being asked about Spygate. And one of them is like, what Spygate? <laughs> and he plays for the Patriots. Anyways, it's just a ridiculous day. Really looking forward to the start of the National Football League season. I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you for joining us for the inaugural broadcast from the plush Silicon Valley studios of Seat 77, soon to be available on the App Store and at uh, the Android Play Store as well. One of the uh, cool sports apps that you will see. For the Seat 77 Sports Update Desk, as always, 
I'm Dave DeBaugh, reminding you that not all news is real. <laughs> Some of it is fake, and good luck, North America.